All right, so welcome everybody to day three of the challenge. And today what we're gonna do is upload our data or I'm gonna take you through the sequence of how you get the data from your phone or from your sensor onto the computer, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna take you, okay, let me take you into my Libra account. So the first thing that I'm gonna say is that if you're in Canada or if you're in Bermuda, it is slightly different. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through, cause I, we have some Bermudians that are here as well, I see. So I'm gonna walk you through the Bermuda account as if we had to, I guess, but it's similar both ways. So I'm gonna open a brand new account because right now that's the only way I can show you the steps. So are you seeing my screen okay? Yeah, okay. So I'm at Libreview.com, okay? Now I have to create a new account because that's the only way I can show you the steps. So I'm gonna see if I can make an account for my father. <laughs> um, Excuse me, Tiffany? Yes. They, when I went to put your information in, they prompted me for a number. Yeah, and that's what I was trying to find out what my number is, and okay. I, don't, I don't know that. All right. um, so that's why if I go backwards to you, I think it will work yeah. that way. Okay, okay, perfect. I have to try. Um, I guess I already signed my father up. Okay, just a second here. Um, oh, I know what's going on here. No, I'm going to sign it. So this is what you would do. Okay, never. So I'm going to take you back a step. So you're going to go to LibreView.com. Okay, if you've got your computer, let's start this again. Then you want to register. So you're going to go to sign up. So then the question is if you want a Libreview account or a professional account. So you're going to choose a Libreview account, right? Because you just want this for yourself. Then you're going to hit the continue button. Now, this is where it can be tricky. So if you're in Canada, of course, you choose Canada. But if you're in Bermuda, then you need to choose America because we don't have a registry with Libreview. Like there is no Bermuda in the drop down menu. Okay. So you have to choose USA. So let's, I'm gonna set up a, a fake Bermuda account here, okay? So I, you choose the United, um, United States or Canada, should be similar. Then you have to go through these screens that they want to allow you to confirm that you read all their terms and conditions. And a lot of this just has the issue of privacy, right? Then there's another screen all about the privacy. So you're gonna confirm that one as well, that you've read it. Then um, opt in as they want your research, so basically, they want to access your data that they might use anonymously. So you could choose to opt in or to decline. And then what you're going to do is set up your account name. So I'm going to try setting up my father, if I didn't set him up already. I don't think I did. So I'm just going to pick a birthday. This is not his birthday, but... So then you would go just a typical, like you're logging into any account, okay? And then you hit the next button. Then you need the email address to put in, okay? And then you just set up your password like you would do with anything. I get it saved. So. And then of course, if you wanna get more information from Abbott, you can just check on there. Now let's see if I made my father, okay. So this is, I was able to set up a account for him. So verify the email address to complete the account creation. So what would happen here is if you hit, once you hit the next button, you're gonna get a link in your email account. And then that's gonna allow you to continue on the rest of the process. So then you just open that email, just like when you're subscribing to a lot of different things, press the verify button, and then you'll be able to come back to this page and then hit the next button. Okay, so this is not gonna work for me because I can't access my father's account. So um, has have anyone gone through this step or got to this step? Yes, no. Did you try Cindy? Here, I'm gonna unmute people so we can, uh, if you want to. Yes, yeah. I got that far, yep. You got that far? No, uh -huh. I did. Okay, did anyone hit any, so what was the roadblock, I guess, that you hit when you got this far? 
you have to uh, get, I had to actually ask for, um, to resend the uh, email that took about three or four times before, and then all of a sudden all of them came through at one time. Okay. <coughs> so that's good to know, Tina, because sometimes, you know, depending on your internet speed, sometimes there can be a little bit of a delay. So you did get through, and were you were able to activate your account? I haven't got that. Um, I've activated it and I'm, I've uh, installed it on my desktop, but I can't find it on my computer. I don't know where it's gone. I'm, I'm looking, I've looked at my downloads and I can't find it. Sometimes you can, it depends if you have a Mac, you know, you can just kind of go through and do a search to try to find it as well for Libra. Yeah. So if, if you're able to do this part, so then we have, so the difference with Canada and we have the difference with Bermuda. Okay, so I'm gonna take you in to my LibraView account. So in, this is my Bermuda account, okay, that has access. I've got my data uploaded here. This is from, I think last year on this account. So then what it's gonna ask you in Canada, you, your email address should match the email that's on your app, right? When you set up, the app for your LibreView account, that is that as long as that matches your LibreView here, then you should be able to see your data. So Kelly, were you able to get to this part? Could you see your data? Okay, so I only put my sensor on about 30 minutes ago. Oh yes, that's right, because you just got it. Yeah, and so I have to wait an hour, I guess. Right. Everything so, else is set up and ready to go. I downloaded the app, I signed into my account. I even went to, connect with you that's when it prompted me for this um patron id number or physician right. ID number. Yeah. so anyone else in canada that has the one on their phone have you been able to log in then to libra view so it uplinks your data because once you create that account then it should be uploading the data from the app into this account so you should be able to get a report like this that would be generated for you does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So then if you're in Bermuda, then we have another little bit of an issue, right? So let me just come out here. Pause this for a moment. Stop this. Oh, and I've got some questions here in the chat too. Okay. Um, so if you're in Bermuda, you're gonna need that little adapter cord, right? So you have that little adapter cord, one end, um, I don't have my exact cord. So one end has a USB, and then the other end is gonna have the attachment that you're gonna plug into the back of your little device, right? And then it's gonna ask you, especially in Bermuda, you have to download like the drivers, that's the whole sequence that has to go in. And that can take a little bit of time because what happens then, the drivers get downloaded onto your computer, just like if you had a printer at your house. You know, when you buy a new printer, you have to install the drivers because that's going to allow your computer to see the, um, the information. It's gonna allow it to upload things that are on your reader. Sorry, computer screen is changing. So have Canadians, so that's gonna be the step that you need to do and then that might, or sorry, that's Bermudians are gonna to need to do that. And then once you get those drivers downloaded, then it's gonna upload in another screen again. Does that make sense? So if you wanna kind of play with it and see if you're able to get you know, those drivers opened, and I'm gonna see here if I can access, um, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna show you mine. For some reason, I can't find my Canadian ID. It doesn't give me an ID. So for people that want me to access their data, you can just send me a private message with your email address and date of birth. And then I'll be able to upload you. And I'm just gonna check here one more time, just while you're, you're looking. I'm just gonna double check as I, to find my Canadian um, information. Maybe it will give it to me. In Bermuda, it didn't give me anything with that account. 
Okay, let's see, terms of service. All right. I haven't been into my Canadian. So the difference, the reason I, I have a Canadian account, of course, with Canadian values and the Bermuda account with the Bermuda values, because we know the blood sugar is different on both. These are always the technical things, right? When we're trying to play with gadgets, it can take a little while um, for us to get into the computer and understand it. Okay, so I got into my Canadian values and I'm going to see if it does list. Okay, I do have, so for the Canadians, it looks like I do have a practice, my practice ID for Canadians is DRT Keenan. Can you repeat so, that? Yeah, and I put it in the chat as well. So D, doctor, like D-R-T yeah. Keenan, K-E-E-N-A-N. So if you enter this code, it says it will automatically connect you with my practice. Now that's for Canadians, okay? So for the Bermudians, um, then the code, it wouldn't give me a code in Bermuda. So I don't know if it's set up slightly differently because I'm going to look at my Bermuda account again now. Because in Bermuda, it gives me my healthcare. I don't know if any Bermudians have tried. It's Dr. Tiffany Keenan, BDA. That's what's coming up in my Bermuda account. So I'll put that in the screen for the Bermuda addresses. Because once we're able to do this, then next week, you know, for those that are interested, we'll be able to go in and I'll be able to look at all of your, your data if you want to share that and we can kind of go through your food diary and see how things are going. So the first one was Canada, DRT Keenan. And then the uh, Bermuda is the second one, Dr. Tiffany Keenan, BDA. So what I'm going to get ready to do now then is just share my screen so that when you get in, you're going to have at least a little idea of what you're looking at. I'm trying to find my own data. <laughs> Here we go. Just a verification. Hamilton? Hamilton. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to share screen. All right, so for those that are able, um, if you're able to see my screen now, so once you go in to log your data, now again, you, you need a couple of days, but once you, when you get like in a week, you're going to have really good values. We've only had the sensor on since Monday, so we really just have about three days of data, so it doesn't give you great reporting and, and the ability to do interpretation. Uh, it's meant to do an interpretation with at least a week's data. And then with the two weeks data, you're really going to get a lot further. So you're going to come to a basic screen like this. It's going to say glucose history. So what I like about this screen is that in the beginning, you get to see a little snapshot of what's going on. Okay. So this is the sensor that I wore. It looks like my, it was my Canadian sensor because my average glucose was 4.7 and I wore it back um, in January. So the end of January, the 1st of February this year. So I really like this section because this gives me a snapshot as a doc and it allows me to quickly kind of see what's going on. So now this is set in Canadian units. So you can see 3.9 to 11. That was the automatic that came up when I had my Canadian sensor. Now, someone said when they turned their sensor on the other day, the Canadian units, it was 3.9 to 10. Is that right? Did someone have that? And that would be more the optimal, right? 3.9 to 10 would be your 
I guess, ideal. So what I can tell from this little screen, and remember in Bermuda, when you have this screen on, it's gonna come up as seven to 140, if that's the way you calibrated it. And remember, you can always go back to your device to change it, but usually once you get it in with those basic units, you keep it that way. Now, when you have the Canadian sensor on, one of the, depending on which sensor you have, you can actually flag the Canadian sensor that it will beep if you're going below a certain number. And it will actually beep when you go above a certain number. So I don't have that sensor, I can't show you that, but if you look at your settings, you'll be able to see that, okay? So with the, um, so you're, this kind of diagram is gonna look the same. It's just the numbers on the side that are gonna be different uh, depending on which country that you're in. So this showed me that I was, yes, so my average was 4.7. So in um, Bermuda units, that would be an average of about, probably about 80, maybe 85, something like that. And then the nice thing you can also do with your reports, I think I have a few old ones here, okay, is you can start to look down and compare your old, your last numbers. Now, I, this is me wearing a sequence of different sensors, right? But for patients, and I'm going to show you a few next week, this is quite interesting when we see the impact of dietary changes. So this is your overall view right here. But then you're going to see glucose reports. So you're, it's a nice big blue button, and it's meant to be clicked, okay? So once you get into this screen, this is really going to provide you the breakdown information of everything that was going on in that two-week time period. So the first thing it's going to provide you is this kind of time and range. Now, for those that aren't um, a diabetic or aren't on insulin, this is not quite as important. What we're really looking for is your day-to-day -day data. But for a diabetic, this can be because what we want is to keep you time in target. So we know that's what the guidelines say is that they want to keep diabetics in this range. But you know, a diabetic typically is not gonna play around like you're playing with, around with your gadgets right now. So the other thing it shows you is your average glucose, okay? So this would be my average over a 14 day time period. So in Canada, it's mine was 4.7. The goal would be less than 8.6 over the two weeks. And then it says the glucose management indicator. So this is basically giving you an approximate A1C. So if you remember the other night we spoke and we said that the A1C is your three month average of your blood sugars. And this is what you would be able to see in this section. Um, and then this is, I guess the, the average, um, based on average, the, the glucose level during that time, 35 millimoles. So 5.3, of course, is a really good number, and I hope it should be. I work hard to keep this low, okay? The next section of your graph is going to be a lot of fun, okay? Because every time you scan over this, once again, I want you to learn this so that next week you'll be able to play with it more. Um, so every time you scan, there's a dot, right? And so then the all of the dots come up in this diagram. So what it said for me, it's trying to be predictive. And it said, hey, Tiffany, for you, you had some lows overnight. It didn't comment much about my daytime, but it said my lows overnight. So that's the computer trying to give you a little bit of an analysis. And then as we come down a little bit further, then you get kind of a similar graph that we had at the very beginning. But what you'll see here, there's a solid blue line. So the solid blue line is telling you the average throughout the day. All right, that's your average sugar. So you want it to be pretty flat. You can see my sugars were, they do tend to stay quite low. Then the slightly darker blue line, it's kind of the, the mean and the median, right? So it's kind of that next level up of an average. And then if you look at the light blue number, that tells us um, our excursions. Like that tells us the maximum we ever went and the lowest that we ever went. So sometimes you're gonna see, oh my goodness, that number was up but maybe it's just cause you were just playing around and you had a can of Coke, right? And so you saw that, oh, that's what the Coke did to me. But overall, what we're gonna be looking for is, you know, we look at this, right, this number to see what the overall numbers. And then we get in to what's called the daily glucose profile. So this is a, a quick snapshot of 14 days, right? So if you plug this in tonight or tomorrow, you're gonna see three days data, and then it'll just keep uploading every day when you, uh, set it in. 
So again, for me as a physician, I quickly look at this, but what I really want to get to is the juice, okay? So we'll get down to that in a second. This shows your monthly summary. And again, for diabetics, this can be a really important screen, right? Because it's going to tell you your average sugar during that day, your highs, uh, and then your, at your high. And it, the little red arrows mean that I had some lows on that day. So some diabetics want to get this into a healthy number. And then, but this is a screen I really like. All right. And this is where you're going to be able to take your food diary and start to see what's going on. Oh, I, pull, I pulled up a great one. Okay. So let's have a little look and you'll get to see what I had. All right. So when I was doing this, I had my Canadian sensor on. So the, for the Canadians that are there, what you're able to do when I spoke uh, in Bermuda and when I talked about the little reader, it has a food stamp, right? But in Canada, you can actually write in what you ate. So when you hit that button after you scan, so you scan with your phone, you hit the button, it comes up with your number, then you're going to hit food, and then you can actually type in the words of what you ate. So let's see what I ate. Oh. <laughs> okay. So overall at these numbers, I guess, too, the other thing I look for is some patterns. You know, I didn't really have, I'm looking for highs and lows, kind of highs. You see a few lows down through here. Again, my sugar does tend to uh, average on the lower end of the spectrum. You see a few little bumps. So I'm looking at this when I'm analyzing someone's data and that's what we'll do next week when I see a week of your data. But then, um, see, I do have some highs, they do go up. Um, look at this, I even went up to almost 11, 10.8. And we'll see what that was. Okay, so let's just have a little peek in here. So often I give the first day of your readings, it takes a little while for your body to calibrate, okay? Or I should say it takes a while for your, the sensor, we know it's interstitial to see where the numbers are at. So let's just look at my kind of my day two. Is that interesting? No, let's look at something that went a little bit more, okay. So what I was trying out, so and this was on a Saturday, so you'll always see the date here on the left-hand screen, and then it's going to show you the glucose. And if you write down the amount of carbs that will show up, I think most of us aren't counting carbs, but we're, we can write in the word or we can see the food stamp. So for this day, so for breakfast, I had toast with peanut butter, okay? So when I eat toast, I eat um, a multi-grain toast that has a lot of fiber in it but I wanted to see what was happening when I put the peanut butter on. So you can see here, I'll enlarge it a little bit more. So I went from 4.3 up to 5.1, and then I came back down again. So I didn't have a really big spike. So part of that is I was having a whole grain toast. It had a lot of fiber in it. And also I had peanut butter and my peanut butter has no added sugar. So then later um, I did some exercise. So you know, again, Canadians, you can write this in and then it will come up on your screen. Then after yoga, I had a salad with smoked salmon and cantaloupe. And then I had one Hershey's chocolate. Um, and so that stayed fine. I had a little tiny bump and then it went down and became flat again. Okay. And then I did have a big dinner. What did I say? Went very, went low, very full after a big dinner. So I did have a big dinner. Oh, there, here it was. So what did I have? I had salad and pizza and tiramisu, okay? I'm revealing all tonight, right? And I was wearing my device. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this to show you is when we start coming to how we can hack things next week, I had my salad first, then I had the pizza, and then I had a tiramisu. Now, I didn't comment here, but most likely I had a glass of wine because I like red wine with my pizza. And so, but I didn't have much of a rise, okay? It really didn't rise up very much. But what did happen for me, and this is what we spoke about last night. So as I was going off to bed, if you look at this number, so this is around 11.30 at night, if you can see it. Then I went off to bed, so then your screen continues here. So then you're at midnight. But around two o'clock in the morning, I went a little bit low. Now, I didn't scan myself, so I, I must not have woken up at that time. But 
like I said, sometimes alcohol can make you go low at nighttime. So that's a little something to, to look for, all right? So then let's just have a peek at this day as well. So for breakfast, you can see I was pretty low. I stayed low at breakfast. I just had a coffee. So for me, black coffee doesn't do anything. It kept, kept me steady, 4.4, and I remained flat. And that's what you'll start to see, some of you that do maybe intermittent fasting, and uh, you'll start to see that, hey, I don't even rise up at all in the morning. And then for lunch, so I had the other half of the pizza, but I didn't have the salad. So you can see I went from 4.3 to 5.6, but then I came back down again. So that was pretty good still. And then um, what happened at dinner? So dinner was at 6.30, was a salad. I had chicken and then I had a small bit of potato salad. I had ice cream and I had Prosecco. So this would have been half a sandwich. Okay, I'm not sure which day that one came from because then I have half a sandwich that was down here. I think this was the half a sandwich. Yes, and I ate dinner late that night. No, 6.30 was my sa salad. This is why a food diary is really important when you're doing this. Because again, you're wearing your sensors for just two weeks, a lot of you, and um, really putting your times down because you want to know, okay, was that the half a sandwich or was it the pumpkin cake, <laughs> right? But something caused me to go a little bit low that night. And then let's go down to another day that maybe I had a little change. So here I was testing things out again. So on this day, this is Tuesday, your date's always here, your time, so six. So this was around 9.30 in the morning. I had two toast, then I had eggs and some strawberries. So now this did take me up a little rise, again, 4.3 to 6.7, but that's fine, right? Like it doesn't, we don't, it, it, your sugar going up is not a problem. That's what's supposed to happen when your sugar goes up. Now, my data, you can see this is what a normal sugar should do right now for some of you that are out there we're going to see kind of some differences happening because maybe you have prediabetes or insulin resistance so your numbers are going to look different than mine but i want to show you more or less what normal could look like okay and then uh, at supper i was testing things out again i guess it was around uh, 3 30. so at, at three i had a whole apple but i had cheese so remember last night sarah said not to eat naked carbs that we always want to pair our carbohydrates with some kind of protein. And look at this, this apple, a whole apple. And uh, I would have had old fashioned cheddar. That's what I like to eat. And then that was fine. It kept my sugar going well. And then I want to bring down just one where I did go up. My number went up a little bit further. I want to show you this one. So this was on a Friday. So most likely what I would have had. So this was my lunchtime value, 4.2. So I had wahoo, which is a Bermuda fish, and vegetables with a cream sauce. I got this at a local takeaway place. But then I had the two McVitie's cookies after it. So McVitie's are, um, for the British people out there, they're kind of like an oatmeal crisp. They're, they're really good cookies, okay? But what I found is my, my sugar went up, it went down. But for me, it was going down, and then I got a craving and a headache. So this is something to watch for, right? Now, I didn't go down very low. I went from 4.2, you know, I probably went up to maybe, I don't know, six or seven, but then I started getting a craving. So that's another thing to watch for. So my sugar, you know, you can see this is higher than I usually would go, but I got the craving afterwards. So that was a sign that maybe this is not so good for my body. Remember, you're doing this because you're experimenting with your body. And then if we go down, um, what did I have here? I think I had seen one higher number down below. Okay. Oh yes, this was something I was testing out for you all. So this was uh, in February, all right. So my sister had been down, so he had bought some oatmeal. So if you're looking, you've seen my data, right? My sugars barely go up. I eat all kinds of stuff. I have little tiny bumps. I have little rolling hills, right? Um, you know, eggs, they don't make, take me up much at all. But this day, this was on, on a Thursday, I had an apple without the skin. So it shouldn't be, so I took off the uh, skin to take away the fiber. But then I had oatmeal with maple sugar. So Canadians out there, you know, you can buy that maple sugar. It's absolutely delicious. So I had three teaspoons of maple sugar on that oatmeal. 
So this was old fashioned oats, right? That I had cooked in the pan, you know, slow cooked them, but I added that maple sugar and it took me from you know 5.8 up to 10.8. So basically in Bermuda numbers, it would have taken me from probably like a 90 right up to 140 with oatmeal. Now, again, I did put the sugar on the oatmeal, but this is a common meal that we would eat, right? Like a lot of times we're told, eat your old fashioned oats. Um, but for me, it did cause quite a, a rise for me to go up. And then later in the day, what did I have? I had a tortilla and guacamole. Now that was a low carb tortilla that really didn't make much of a rise. Then I had um, my whole grain toast with some pumpkin soup took me up just a little bit, okay? So this is the interpretation that you're gonna be able to do. All right, so any questions that you have with that? It's gonna be fun to start to see your numbers. Yeah, go ahead, Fiona. Just all here, I'll unmute you, just a second. Oh, just take your mute off. There you go. So um, the in terms of the, the, the bump, as it were, so um, I, you know, obviously we saw some big ones and we saw some little ones. We're meant to test an hour after we've eaten. Um, so um, I guess that my question is, is, is there an acceptable um, rise? And, um, uh, and what we don't want is the low that creates the craving. So what we want is a, um, you know, we, we expect a rise. We don't want it to be too big, um, but also just in terms of, um, almost, I don't mean the length, but um, mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'm, I'm just trying to work out what is normal and what isn't. <laughs> right. So if you look at levels health, okay, so what they feel a rise should be is about 30 in Bermuda units would be about okay. 30. Okay. okay. And so that, that's acceptable in terms of what we would expect from, from what we're eating. Exactly. So I'm okay. going to show you that um, slide again from them. And we can here, let's just, let me share. So this is the Levels Health slide, remember from America. So this is the company and all they're doing is, is looking at these values. So when we look at your post-meal glucose, okay? So typically the standard range would be, they just give you a number, right? So we say that your sugar should be between basically 70 and 140. And in Canada, we say between four and 10. So as long as it's up in that area. But what levels health, so this is the standard range that we're told. Now levels believes that this is optimal. And now the reason that they're doing this is, you know, these are top researchers from around the world. Um, and they feel that a post-meal glucose should be less than 30 milligrams. Okay. So, I'll have to translate what that would be in our unit, in the, in the Canadian grams, in terms of how much rise, okay? And they feel that a post-meal peak shouldn't actually be more than 110, right? So Levels is saying that our optimal, where we should be, our optimal numbers would be basically, our fasting should be 72 to 85, and that after meal, you shouldn't go up to more than 110. So that's the majority of time. Now for me, there's times, look, I just had oatmeal and I went up to basically 140 and I've had oatmeal before. I've had a tea biscuit and I've gone up to 146, right? Like a scone. So it's not that you'll never get to those ranges. There can be, but the majority of your time, this is the range that you want to be in. Okay. Thank so does you. that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, I mean, have some work to do. <laughs> and in part of it, you know, we do know that as we age, there can be a little bit more insulin resistance that let's from an aging kind of perspective. Um, but we still don't want the majority. We want those peaks not to go so high. The reason for that, and a lot, this is, there's a lot of argument in the community about it, right? In this, in the greater community, because we know when you have a spike, it will activate this whole inflammatory cascade. So what does that mean? That it, it's gonna trigger your insulin 
insulin is going to trigger these markers that can cause stress and inflammation in your system. So if you are not a pre-diabetic, you know, if your overall your numbers are good and you have an occasional peak that goes up, that's fine. But if you're someone that does have prediabetes already, or if you have polycystic ovarian, or if you're really trying to lose weight, then what's likely going on is when you go above that 110 mark, then you're triggering, you're putting stress on your liver. Remember last night, Sarah talked about that, that when the liver is constantly being bombarded with insulin, it can get burnt out. And the more the liver gets burnt out, the harder it is for it to start to adapt. And so that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at those sugar spikes. So once in a while is okay. Um, and it depends on kind of where your end goal is. The other thing that we know is when we have multiple spikes, multiple times during the day, that's another thing to consider. Because remember yesterday, I think we spoke briefly about intermittent fasting. We talked about that window and, and how people don't eat for breakfast. And Sarah told you that, remember years ago, she would tell a diabetic, you have to have three meals a day and you have to have two, two snacks. But every time you would have a meal and a snack, you're gonna cause that sugar to rise. So if we look at you know, my numbers here, so where am I? So if I was having a spike you know, four to five times a day, I have very few, like if, if this was going up all the time, like if I was eating break, eating break, if I had five little mountains, then that might be putting more stress and strain on my liver. So this is something for you to watch for. Now, there are certain people that need to keep themselves a little bit like their blood sugars more steady. A lot of times that happened in those people kind of say that they have hypoglycemia. It's because their body's not been stabilized enough. Okay. Cortisol comes in a lot here. That's stress hormone, remember called cortisol. But what you should be looking for, for the most part, is you should be looking for about three bumps a day, right? So three, you know, this kind of rise you know, it can come up to the top, but it should go up and then it should come back down again. You really don't want um, to have those big peaks like that are going, the, the Everest ones, I call them. And an Everest one, would I even call this an Everest? You know, it does look bigger, right? So it went up for higher and it stayed up for longer, right? When I had that oatmeal. So when we look at timing and you kind of asked about that, Fiona, so let's see here. So I ate at 10 o'clock, I had that apple. So for me, um, and then my peak was at 12. And then even by one o'clock, I was still down to probably, I still wasn't down to my baseline. So it took me like from 10 until two to get back to my baseline. Cause generally you're gonna wanna see that peak go up and within two hours, it pretty much should be back down to baseline. Like if you look, um, what's a good food that I ate? Um, well, even this Wahoo, right? So this was a pretty big meal for me. So I had this at around one o'clock. I had it about, you know, just after one. So by two, I was getting quite high, but then by 3.20, so um, within two, one, so within two hours, I was completely back down to my baseline again, okay? And that is significant, is it? I mean, in terms of how how quickly you get back to normal, that is a good sign. Yeah, but th like this is, you know, I feel I am healthy metabolically and it took me two yes. hours to get back to baseline. So that's completely fine. Yeah, so it was it just, and that's super helpful as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, do we have any other questions? Yeah, go ahead, Kelly. Oh, there you go. Okay, I was just wondering, on the app, it says to set your alarms. So I'm not quite sure what to set it for. It starts at 3.9 and goes, or you can set it lower than that, and it goes to 13.3. Right. So I wouldn't worry about setting a low, okay? But it okay. can be fun to set a high. Okay. Because then you'll get triggered because don't worry about the lows. Like I've said to most of you, if you're not a diabetic on medication, lows aren't going to cause any problem. Do not panic, right? Um, right? The body knows how to kick back in again. But the highs, what I would do, because you're trying to be pretty tight, Kelly, I would set your high as 10. Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah. too. Yeah, yep. put okay, it as great. 10. 
And then you'll be able to see, um, and then what basically it's just gonna ring if you go high and then you're gonna be like, ah, that's what took me up. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, my alarm just went off. That means my hour is up. I can scan my- oh, There you go. I'm so happy. <laughs> So I must admit the Canadian device is wonderful and I, we are hoping, you know, Sarah and I have talked about this before and she really is trying to bring that device into Bermuda. Uh, but for the moment we have the sensor, but at least we have that ability to upload. There she goes, her first, let's see what her number is gonna be. Let us know. Is it beeping? Did it beep? No, I'm not getting anything. Maybe I don't have it on the right. Oh, it might need to be just a little bit longer. Yeah, sometimes it's supposed to be about an hour. But did you hit the little scan button? The little the I blue button? No, I didn't hit the scan button. Okay, yeah, you do have to still hit the scan button. It's in the center of your screen, isn't it, Cindy? Like you have one at the bottom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right on my phone, not on the app? In your app, it's a, in the Libre, in the LibreView app. There should be a little blue button there. Do you want to tell her, Cindy? Where? Um, just I'll get you to unmute. Yeah, it's you look at the screen of your phone. Yeah, and when you go into that app, I'll go into mine as well, and I'll okay. show you. Thanks. Okay, and then you'll see on the screen it'll say scan. You see that? It says uh, scan. No. Oh, there you the go. Yeah, that's bottom. good. See that little blue button that says scan. Yeah, I see that. Hit that. I don't, but I don't see it on my phone. I oh, wonder yeah. if she has an Apple phone. Like my Samsung doesn't have a scan on it. I, I have an Apple phone. Oh, you do? Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Are you, are you in your app? Are you in the app? No, I'm just going to go out and. Okay. So we got Kelly's sensor on. And the big thing is, yeah, you. Put the sensor on, then you activate it, then you'll have an hour from that point. Okay. Okay. And All right. Well, I do have a question. How yes. many readings can you do a day? As many as you want. <laughs> can you? Okay. Remember what Sarah said last night? The more you scan, the better it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. it it looked like it had a eight time limit, but I must have read it wrong. No, I'm sure I've scanned 20 plus times a day. Oh, there's people that you can scan eight times because people will track their number going up and as it comes back down again. So, so if you can, so over the next few days, then you, you know, we're still, remember, we're in the body discovery mode, um, play around, get your data uploaded. And then what I want you to do is try to link into those codes. If you can't get in to share your data with me, let me know, then just send me your email address and date of birth. And then I will upload your data for those of you that want to uh, share it for me to look at your data. Okay. And so tomorrow night, I just want to, before we leave, just to let you know, tomorrow night, we're going to have a little, um, we're going to have a special guest for those that are able to make it. Her name is Rosalyn Cure. So Rosalyn is a Bermudian that now has, um, through a ketogenic lifestyle, she's completely changed her life. I'm going to share her before and after pictures with you. And she's to the point now that she actually has quit her job and opened up her own cooking business where she actually makes ketogenic meals. It's a meal delivery service here in Bermuda. So she's going to share her story. She's going to talk about her low carb lifestyle. Um, she doesn't wear a sensor, but I think her story is very inspiring for all of you to know that change is possible, that you can reverse things. All right, so that's tomorrow at 7.30. If you're able to make it, there'll be a recording. And then um, we will go from there. So thanks, everybody. And again, feel free to message me with any questions you have. Have a great night. All right, thank you. Good night. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Thanks.